Hello everyone, my name is Martha. I'm a relationship and sexuality counsellor, coach. I, <laughs> I'm i just adjusting the lighting. Okay, so I, I have a doctorate in human sexuality, been in practice for 10 years. You can find me at eroscoaching.com. So I'm making this video because I want to talk about the importance of receiving. So I just did this um, tele summit recording. I'm going to be part of it, and it uh, we recorded at 9 a.m. And so since I'm all made out, I thought, okay, let's just do another video. This is Sunday morning in Singapore. I have been following this uh, website called Daily Om. Okay, so it's dailyom.com. I, I love this uh, website. They provide a lot of um, in uh, personal development uh, online courses, and they have a daily e newsletter that they um, send out to their subscribers. So I love the work of um, Macy Tyler. She's the founder, and I've been following this particular website for <laughs> years, I would say maybe close to. 10 years maybe. I love Daily Om. I am a spiritual person and I am inspired to talk about the importance of receiving because I, I read her recent uh, e newsletter a few days ago and it's, uh, the title is Allowing Ourselves to Receive. So if you go to the homepage, you can see all her daily inspirations. So uh, what she does is she groups her inspiration and she writes it. And she writes it from like an intuitive way. It's not very scientific or anything. But um, as a sex educator, counselor, I, of course, have had to also learn the importance of um, receiving for myself. Uh, in our culture as Asians, we are conditioned to give and give and give. Uh, and we learn how to do it from our parents. So a lot of my clients, uh, myself included, who's gone through this journey, we see this as a good thing to give and give and give. We learn this from our parents, perhaps. And uh, unconsciously, there's also this belief, it's better to give than to receive. I think we hear this a lot as well. But what happens is give and receive actually is a relationship for somebody to give the other person needs to receive so what happens if you're the only one giving what about those people who want you to give to you the ones who want to receive so it's a relationship right so if you keep giving and they feel like they want to give to you but you cannot receive then what's going to happen is they're going to feel unhappy that they couldn't give to you so in a way, you're doing yourself and you're doing them a disservice because they want to give. So I have clients who say, no, it's okay. I'm, I, I don't need to receive. What happens is when you're in a long-term relationship and you keep giving and giving and giving all the time and you don't receive, you may find yourself in the position of becoming drained and depleted. So don't you think it's very important that we recharge our energies? And when you're in a long-term relationship and you have a habit of giving and not being able to receive, first of all, your other partner will, will feel frustrated that they can't give to you. And then the next thing is we have to understand there's a fine line between uh, giving and, and really appreciating what you are given and, uh, and all. <laughs> taking things for granted. So you appreciate what you're given, but then there's a fine line that comes a point when you keep doing this, smother them, uh, they start taking things for granted. And that's just human nature. So don't blame them when they start taking things for granted because when they did want to give to you, you couldn't receive. So I think this dynamics, it becomes unhealthy when the person goes into taking things for granted. So it's really important, even though we don't see it, it's actually really important that we learn how to receive. So how can we start to heal our inability to receive? I think the first thing is you can start by experimenting this with yourself and start to receive, start to give to yourself so that you receive, you force yourself to receive. And one of the biggest things that I needed to do um, to learn how to receive was feel that I deserve. And so I started off by um, maybe giving myself little treats. For instance, like sitting in a coffee shop and feeling like I deserve to buy myself a cup of tea <laughs> and just give myself the luxury of time. 
So it's not necessarily about money, it's also giving myself time. So when I give myself the time to sit at a coffee shop and uh, Starbucks, for instance, and just really do nothing, <laughs> the luxury of doing nothing, I I had this like, oh, I got better things to do. So other re resistance came up. So I had to do inner self-talk with myself, like, you know what, Martha, life is a, not a race, it's a journey. Why are you always in a hurry? Can't you just receive? You just bought yourself a cup of coffee and uh, coffee or tea, and now you're saying that you got better things to do. You just literally bought it, and you just said to yourself that you want to practice receiving. So what is this exercise of practicing receiving once a month or once a week? Let's just do it. So I had to tell myself to slow down. I had to tell myself to relax and breathe and receive the gift that I've just given to myself and receive. So actually, it was also a journey that I had to go through. So buying myself a cup of tea, sitting at a coffee shop is one of it, um, treating myself to um, taking a cab, you know. So sometimes the gift of giving to yourself comes from your own pocket. <laughs> But it's part of the learning because when you're not in relationship with someone, uh, you want to learn, you don't just wait for people to give to you and then you get angry because they didn't want to give you anything. And then you have other stuff coming up. So you start practicing with the person that you're always with first, which is yourself. And I also con continue to have to receive graciously when my friends want to uh, give me little treats or buy me presents or uh um, most of the time, it's actually treats. So, for instance, um, you know, them wanting to give me like maybe I'm buying something from there. They want to give me a small discount. I have to, I have to just say thank you. Just mm -mm, zip it up and just say thank you. Just say thank you. Be thankful for what comes because when you have that vibration and you you are thankful for what is okay even if nothing is coming into your life nothing just be thankful of what is be thankful of for the sun be thankful for fresh air be thankful that you have that you're healthy be thankful that uh, you you have friends and you have a job. Be thankful that you have income. Be thankful for everything. And what you're going to find is that more good things can come into your life. So you don't understand that that is also part of receiving. Being thankful and receiving is part of it. It's part of life. So you don't have to feel that uh, receiving is just about presents or money. Uh, no, no, no. It's everything. So the more I started to be thankful for small things in my life, wow, I see so many hearts. Be, when, uh, the more I became thankful for the small things in my life, the more miracles started to happen in my life. So that was a time, now I'm being really vulnerable. That was a time when I felt like I had nothing. But even when I felt like I had nothing, I had a lot. I had my health. I still had parents who love me. I still have my future to look forward to. I still have a life without this toxic person in my life. I still have the future. So even when I had nothing, I still told myself, I have a lot. And even when I didn't have a lot, I told myself that is one thing that I'm always going to be grateful for because I, I love reading books. I'm not a very auditory person. Um, I don't like audiobooks, but I love reading books. I have a few hundred books in my bedroom that for years and years, I'm still having difficulties in getting rid of them. <laughs> you can call me a hoarder, but if there's something that I hoard, it's not clothes, it's not shoes, it's not uh, makeup, <laughs> it's books. I would give away everything but my books. And... So yes, <laughs> sometimes I, I buy myself books because that's what I love and um, buying books gives me joy. And so sometimes I pick up the books that I have and I just am grateful for what I have. So it's very important to receive. Let me read to you this um, daily own, uh, newsletter that I have that inspired me to make this video. By allowing ourselves to receive, we are given the gift of seeing through another person's eyes. Giving and receiving are part of the same cycle we each give and receive in our own ways. So you say that you have difficulties in receiving. Let me clear up that misconception. You are receiving even though you think that you cannot receive. You are receiving. <laughs> Why do I say that? <laughs> now I'm, I'm doing my wicked laugh. You are receiving. 
you are already receiving from the sun, the moon. <laughs> you are receiving when you drink water, when you eat, you are receiving. So you cannot help but receive. If you don't receive, you will die. You will die. And so our ability to receive is part of our survival. <laughs> so can you see that you need to receive? So you are receiving, even though you think that you cannot receive or you don't need to receive. Actually, you need to receive. You need to receive. So it's an ongoing journey. So let me continue to finish reading this uh, in this letter. We can lose our balance when we try to be too controlling of either cycle. It's a relationship and people who can receive are healthy. I often say this, people who can cry, scream, yell are actually healthy people because they can express themselves rather than become suppressed and become walking zombies. <laughs> I call these people walking zombies. <laughs> so I come up with these analogies that maybe people don't appreciate, but I am a coach, so I try to be as clear as I can be. So we may be receiving not with not only gratitude, but a chance to see the world through the eyes of the other. Because uh, we may be learning that just because we gave easily, it doesn't diminish its value. Okay. So I'm going to put the link of this article below. You can you can read it yourself. But I just want to skip to the last paragraph. Accepting a person's gift is a gift by itself sincere appreciation for their acknowledgement and their efforts joins our energies in theirs in a cycle of giving and receiving so there's like this mm -mm, beautiful energy exchange that is happening when you are able to give and receive and whenever we are still having difficulties we can decide to allow ourselves to be conduits of gratitude and accept on behalf of a loving giving universe so your ability to receive is also a present Sometimes I say this, your presence, your presence is a present. Your presence is a present. When someone says, hey, you know, I want to buy you lunch. Hey, you know, just spend some time with me. I want to buy you coffee, tea. It's a present. They actually just want to be around you. And of course, it is a choice whether you want to accept that present. And sometimes it may not be a present. They may want to give you a present. But if this present feels like it's more of a taking, rather than the giving then it's really up to you to check into your intuition and decide whether you want to receive that present they think it's a present you don't see it as a present you see it as them exploiting you or taking from you that's a whole different story but what i'm trying to say is when it comes to uh, uh receiving of a present they actually feel the joy of giving you giving you so that's that joy as well Okay, so I want to wrap up this video, but uh, Diana is asking, what are your favorite books? I have many, many books that I love, and um, Urban Tantra is one of them from uh, Barbara Corella. She's one of my teachers, and um, I, I love re reading anything by Marianne Williamson because she's spiritual, and she a lot of what she says I agree with. And I like anything that is uh, actually spiritual. So I have this book uh, on archetypes called by Carol. I'm uh, just looking at the book in front of me now. Uh, it's by Caroline um, Mays, M-Y-S-S. -S, and it's called Secret Contracts and it's on archetypes. I have several um, books on spiritual, um, sacred relationships. Uh, one is called... Uh, Spiritual Partnerships by uh, Gary Zuckville, <laughs> Z-U-K-A-V. I have another one by uh, Mona Lisa Scrooge, and it's called Awakening Intuition. I have another one called Opening to Channel, and I have one called The Dark Side of Light Chasers by Debbie Ford. So you can see a lot of the books that I actually treasure and cherish are related to spirituality. So I have a lot of books about sexuality as well. The reason why I, I have a lot of them but I don't read them is because a lot of them I already know. So I can actually skim through a, a book on sexuality in less than an hour because a lot of it I already know. So why do I have them? Because it's the finer details of how can I be a better sex and uh, sex sexuality and relationship counselor. Because um, when it comes to the knowledge is there, but when it comes to the expression is different. So even though I have a lot of uh, sexuality books, the thing is I don't read them because it's work. <laughs> when sex becomes work, 
um, then sometimes you do have to pace yourself. So I, I read the books uh, because it's my free time. I read the books that gives me a lot of joy. So that's what I do. Okay, so I've answered the question, what's your favorite books, even though that's not what I wanted to make this video about. So yes, it is very important to receive. So today is Sunday. You have the rest of the day to receive. So why is it that will give you joy and pleasure? Why is it that you feel like doing? What makes you happy? It's important to be happy because guess what? Work can be draining, tiring, frustrating. You may not feel like working uh, and it's okay. It's okay. We need to have a balance. So what does your body feel like doing today? What do you feel you need to receive? And part of the receiving is giving to yourself. And don't look at other people to give to you when they themselves don't have the ability to give because giving comes from a spirit and pace and place of ability to give. People cannot give to you when they don't have the ability to give. Maybe they are tired, burnt out. Maybe they don't have money. They cannot give you a treat if they don't have money. So it is really important that if you have the money, you have the time, you are in relationship with yourself, then you give to yourself. Yeah, celebrate, celebrate yourself. So give you an example, yesterday I did uh, two workshops uh, out of vulva pleasuring and out of penis pleasuring. And at the end of the workshop, I wanted to treat myself to having a meal with my friends. So I gave them a treat because they helped me. And so that's me giving and uh, they received, but also it was me anchoring that experience of celebrating so they can see as that I gave them a present, I bought them a treat because they were helping me support my workshop as well. But actually, I was also celebrating. So I was actually, yeah, I was actually receiving, I was receiving the pleasure of giving to them. But I was also anchoring that experience of after my workshop, I celebrated me, I celebrated me, I celebrated my achievement of having finished that workshop. So by anchoring it, by giving to them, can you see that I was also receiving and it's so important to celebrate ourselves because we went out on the limb i was brave i was vulnerable i put myself on the line once again and so in order to anchor that success i celebrate myself nobody celebrates me i celebrate myself so on friday <laughs> yesterday was saturday on friday I had this workshop called Sex and Sexuality 101 and I was so tired, I was so tired and at the end of it, because it was very late and I had two workshops the next day, so I couldn't have a big celebration. You know how I celebrated myself? I went to Cheers and I bought myself a sugared drink because I was so thirsty and was craving some sugar in my drink. So there was this discount thing. I bought two. It's like two thirty for two. So I bought two. I finished one, and the other one, I is the gift that keeps giving. I celebrate it by giving myself a little treat. It's just a small treat. It's like one dollar. Um, and then the other bottle, I brought it home, and I knew, I knew. Intuitively, I knew my, my dad would like it um, because it's like a sugared drink, but it was like chrysanthemum, you know, like a packet kind of thing. It was like in a carton. So then I, I gave it to my dad and uh, I knew he would probably want to bring it to work the next day. Uh, he had a long day the next day and it's just kind of like a little treat that I gave him. So I wanted to get give myself a treat. I bought the drink for myself, I received it, I celebrated the end of my workshops, and then I still had another bottle. So what did I do? I gave it to my father, and then he was able to feel the love and the thought and feel it's a little treat. So I received and I also gave. So it's the gift that keeps going because sometimes you never know. Everything is just divine. It's just divine timing. I would not have occurred to me to go to the cheers and buy my dad a drink. But I was getting myself a drink anyway, and then I had one drink left over, so that I gave it to him. And then he was able to, yeah, even though it was really hard, it was able to receive. It is generally difficult for the older generation, my parents, uh, now my dad, to receive. However, when it's just a $1 drink, they can still receive. So if you have parents who have difficulties in receiving your love, 
uh, I think they, they, they probably are okay with receiving small presents rather than big presents. So let it be a practice of them receiving small presents first and then work them towards being able to receive your bigger presents. So our relationship with receiving is also ever evolving. So we can start by healing ourselves, by giving to ourselves so that we receive. So I know I'm going about this in a long-winded way, but I'm actually trying to use different ways to explain to you the different the different ways we can receive and also the importance of receiving. So this is Martha from Eros Coaching coming to you on a Sunday morning, wishing you a happy weekend. Make the full use of your weekend. Enjoy your love. Enjoy your life. Enjoy people around you because life is beautiful life is short life is worth celebrating you are worth celebrating you are still here you are worthy of respect and even when nobody believes in yourself just trust just hang in there there's something inside you that is worth loving giving to respecting because guess what you have hung in there despite the ups and downs of life you are a warrior you are worth celebrating even when you don't think that you are worth celebrating. I, 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 I celebrate you. So thank you for watching this video. Ta-ta!